So I got to get back to this thing about investigations because everything is investigations now. And Jeff Sessions was at the, again, was pulled before Congress. And it's supposed to be about his Russian statements. And he made a statement that he never talked to anybody during the Trump campaign about Russia. And he said, you know, it was a great campaign. It was a terrific campaign, but it was chaotic. Every day was chaos. I think all of us who've watched Donald Trump can certainly believe Jeff Sessions on this. And that he didn't remember everything he said. And, I, you know, I, I just I, Sessions is a very straight shooting guy. I just don't believe this thing. But they, you, they bring these they bring him here and they're supposed to talk about Russia and they end up just the Democrats just hammering him about anything they can think of. I'll just play one one example of that. Let's play Guiterez. I really do not like Luis Guiterez. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his first name, but he goes after uh, Sessions. And this is what these things have, have kind of degraded into. This is cut 10. Five minutes. Mr. Chairman, before I begin, I think I have a solution that could allow the committee to move on to other important national matters like gun control and immigration. Your cl side clearly wants an investigation of Hillary Clinton. And our side has been begging for months to hold hearings and start an investigation of the Trump administration and campaigns in proper ties to Mr. Putin and the Russian government. My solution would save the American taxpayers a lot of grief and a lot of money by eliminating the need for the investigations. I propose we simply go to the president and the former secretary of state and ask them both to resign. I'll go to Hillary Clinton. And you can go to Donald Trump and we'll save them both to resign. Then we can move on as a nation from an election that just never seems to end. Now, I did Google organizations that Hillary Clinton leads, and it came out zero. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what you're going to get her to resign from, because she doesn't appear to be in charge of anything. So this is, this is what you call gas baggery, you know, like you bring this guy in and you just get these hot air balloons, you know, expel hot air all over the place. And that's supposed to be important. And then people put it up on YouTube saying, oh, Guiterrez destroys Jeff Sessions. And that's nonsense. I mean, Sessions should be at the Justice Department doing his job. But the thing, the other thing from the right, from the right, where I think they're making, they're also making a kind of mistake is Jim Jordan and... Uh, Who's the other one? Uh, Jim Jordan and, and Louis Gohmert, who I love, I think is great. Um, and also, um, oh, who's uh, Mike Gates, I think his name is. Uh, they're trying to get Sessions to appoint a special counsel to investigate, investigate Hillary Clinton. So here is Jordan uh, hammering him about the, uh, the dossier, the Steele dossier, which obviously is the, that, that uh, fusion GPS thing that Hillary paid for to get dirt on Donald Trump from the Russians. It's the closest thing we have to um, to basically collusion with the Russians during the campaign. So let's let's just play. Well, actually, let, let's play cut number eight. Here's Jim Jordan pressuring pressuring uh, Sessions to try and get him to appoint a special prosecutor. What's it going to take to get a special counsel? We know that we know that former FBI Director James Comey misled the American people in the summer of 2016 when he called the Clinton investigation a matter. It's so obviously an investigation. We know FBI Director Comey was drafting an exoneration letter before the investigation was complete. We know Loretta Lynch, one day before the Benghazi report came out, five days before Secretary Clinton was scheduled to be interviewed by the FBI, met with former President Bill Clinton on a tarmac in Phoenix. Um, we know after that meeting, when she was corresponding with public relations people at the Justice Department, she was using the name Elizabeth Carlisle. You know, as I've said before, it seems to me if you're just talking golf and grandkids, you can probably use your real name. We know that Mr. Comey publicized the investigation, and we know he made the final decision on whether to prosecute or not. And then when he gets fired, he leaks a government document through a friend to the New York Times. And what was his goal? To create momentum for a special counsel. And of course, it can't just be any special counsel. It's got to be Bob Mueller, his best friend, his predecessor, his mentor. The same Bob Mueller who was involved, we've now learned, in this whole investigation with the informant regarding uh, Russian businesses wanting to do business in the Iranian business here in the United States regarding the Iranian One deal. So I guess my main question is, what's it going to take, if all that, not to mention the dossier information, what's it going to take to actually get a special counsel? It will take a factual basis that meets the uh, standards of the appointment of a special and is counsel. That, is that analysis going on right now? Well, it's in the uh, manual of the Department of Justice about what's required. We've only had two. The first one was the Waco, Janet Reno, um, Senator Danforth, who took over that investigation as special counsel, and Mr. Mueller. 
Each of those are pretty uh, special factual situations. Let me ask it this and way. And we will use the proper standards, and that's what I, only thing I can tell you, Mr. Jordan. What's the problem with this, okay? Because a lot of Jordan's points are absolutely true. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be looked into and investigated and all this stuff. You don't need a special counsel for this, and in fact, it's, it's a, a bad idea. The reason he wants this is because we now have this battle of investigations going on, which is what they do instead of arguing ideas, instead of debating, instead of legislating, instead of doing the work that we sent them there to do. This investigation has become the, the kind of go-to action of our Congress, and it, it is ridiculous. So when they appointed this special counsel, Mueller, to look into the Russian collusion thing, I went nuts. If, you, if anybody was listening, if you remember, I just thought that was the stupidest thing they had ever done, because once you appoint these guys, they go, they just run rampant. They just go anywhere in order to get the kind of convictions that will make it look like it was worthwhile appointing them, and there's reason to think that Robert Mueller has got too many Democrat donors and all this stuff, and there's also reason to think a lot of people trust him. You know, I'm not I'm not impugning his integrity. I'm just saying once you do this, these guys go wild. So Jordan wants our own wild, rampant, you know, investigator. But the the only thing is you don't need a special investigator for this. Sessions has not recused himself. Sessions had recused himself from the Russian investigation. That's why they needed a special counsel. He hasn't recused himself from any of this. So it doesn't mean he's not investigating it if he doesn't have some crazed special counsel running all over the place. Jordan just wants to continue that battle. That's, you know, and I think it's a waste of our money and our, our time. And I think a lot of this is a waste if, if you, you know, the guys, like I said, Sessions should be basically doing his job investigating Hillary Clinton. But uh, I, I think that this is just, it's a waste and it's a, the wrong way to run a government. It's like a tin pot, you know, it's like a uh, tin pot dictatorship where you inve just investigate everybody.